Example 8.2. A small aerospace company is evaluating two alternatives. The purchase of an automatic feed machine and the manual feed machine for a finishing process. The auto feed machine has an initial cost of $23,000, an estimated salvage value of $4,000, and a predicted life of 10 years. One person will operate the machine at a rate of $24 per hour. The expected output is 8 tons per hour. Annual maintenance and operating costs is expected to be $3,500. The alternative manual feed machine has a first cost of $8,000, no expected salvage value, a 5-year life, and an output of 6 tons per hour. However, three workers will be required at $12 per hour each. The machine will have an annual maintenance and operation cost of $1,500. All projects are expected to generate a return of 10% per year. How many tons per year must be finished in order to justify the higher purchase cost of the auto feed machine? Before we move on with the, pro the problem, let's transform all of this information into a table so that it's easier for us to visualize. Okay, so it's being said that there's two alternatives that are going to be compared. We have the automatic one, and then we have a manual. For the automatic, it says that it has an initial cost of $23,000. So over here, let me write down that this is the initial. We know that initial cost would be your principal. So it's going to be minus $23,000. An estimated salvage value. So we have a salvage value as well. Our S or your F of 4,000 is positive because it's the money that they're going to give to you after a certain number of years. We have 10 years, the life, or your N. And then it says that one person will operate the machine at a rate of $24 per hour and then they give you an output. Okay, so that, let's put it on hold for a bit. Let me move on with the next one because it's an annual maintenance and operating cost. So we have annual. MNO cost and it says right here that it's annual so it's your A and it's a cost so it's going to be negative so it's 3,500 so we have all of the different symbols that we have been um, learning so far so you're able to recognize initial salvage and annual but now, this is what we had put on hold. This is different because you have one person that will operate the machine at a certain amount of dollars per hour and then an output per hour as well. Okay, so these two right here are actually going to be your variable costs. Okay, so we would have labor because we have labor cost. That's part of the variable cost. It says right here that it's one person at $24 per hour. So I'm going to have one person at $24 per hour. And then that person at $24 per hour is going to produce 8 tons per hour. So I'm going to put here that also as part of the variable cost 
we have an output because remember the output depends on the labor because it's variable so you're going to have 8 tons per hour produced by this and that's all the information we have about the automatic now let's move on to the alternative uh, solution here which is a manual feed machine it has a first cost of 8,000 no expected salvage value salvage value is zero a five-year life an output of six tons per hour so now we have er all this uh, organized so let's go down here six tons per hour but in this case three workers will be required at twelve dollars per hour each so we need three people and we need to pay them twelve dollars per hour the machine will have an annual maintenance and operation cost of one thousand five hundred so it goes here and it's a cost, so it's minus 1,500. And then we have the percentage. Uh, and the question is, how many tons per year must be finished in order to justify the higher purchase cost of the auto feed machine? So when you compare two alternatives or two projects, it's a bit different from a single project. Because here, instead of setting the revenue equal to the costs and getting a break-even point here you're going to set the two alternatives equal to each other so in this case it's going to be the automatic one equal to the manual machine and then from there you're going to get the break-even and that's how you're going to justify or select your best alternative there are a series of steps that must be followed for two alternatives and we're going to go step by step the very first the very first step is to find a parameter and the units common to the two relations okay, so let me write that down over here step number one we must find a common parameter A hint to find the common parameter or where will you find the common parameter would be in the question so the question is asking how many tons per year must be finished so that's going to be our parameter and we're going to call this parameter X so it's the common parameter and the units, so the units are the ones in the question. So we're going to have x tons per year. That's our common parameter. So we have step number one. Then it says use annual variable cost. And since we already have the annual variable cost, we're going to be using an annual worth relation for the rest. Okay, so remember that we have our P, we have our salvage value, we have our uh, annual maintenance and operation cost. All of that would be converted to A to match the annual variable cost. Okay, and then we're going to combine these two and the variable cost will be, of course, negative because it's a cost. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, step number two would be the annual worth that's a relation minus the annual variable cost that's how how our uh, final product will look like for each and one of them you have to do this for both so first of all let's do this for the auto Okay, so we have annual
variable cost. Let's start with that. For annual variable cost, we have labor and we have an output. And one thing that I want to point out is that annual variable cost, what is it telling you? We have a cost right here, so the units will be dollars, because it's a cost annual, so it's dollars per year. So that means that we need anything we have given as a variable cost, we have to transform it into dollars per year in order to get the annual variable cost. Okay, so in this case, we have one person at $24. This is in one hour. Okay, so we will be start uh, converting the units and eliminating units. And we know that this is going to produce eight tons in one hour, but we want to eliminate hours because we do not need them. So I'm going to put the eight tons here at the bottom, which are equivalent to one hour. So in this case, we have eliminated cross-eliminated hours, but we still need the years. Where are you going to get this from? From the common parameter. So you're going to do x tons, because remember we don't know how many, in one year. So now we can eliminate tons and all we are left with is the dollars per year. So now let's uh, multiply what we have. 1 times 24 times 1 times x. Do not forget the x. So in this case, you would have 24x divided by 1 times 8 times 1, which is a total of 8 years. Now let's simplify this. 24 divided by 8 would give us 3x per year. This number right here is our annual variable cost. Then again, we don't know what x is yet. Okay, so we have part A. Now let's find the annual worth relation. Okay, so that means that we're going to convert P, uh, the salvage value, and everything to A. So we go back to our table. We already took care of the variable cost, and we are left with this. Okay, another thing to remember is that we'll notice that the automatic is for 10 years and the manual is for 5 years. But since we're basing in chapter 5, because this is for annual worth, it doesn't matter if you have a different life. We will not require an LCM. So I'm just going to put here refer to chapter 5. So we're going to be finding the A over the respective lives. So that means that, yes, I'm going to keep my life uh, at 10 years for the automatic one and 5 years for the manual one. Okay, so that means that we need to convert the P to A, find A given P, find A given F, and this is already in A. Okay, so we're going to be setting up that equation over here. It's going to be minus 23,000 find a given P, the 10% was given to us in the problem here, rate of return of 10% per year. And then we said that the life for this one is 10. Then the salvage value plus 4,000, find a given F, 10% also for 10 years minus the annual maintenance and operation cost, which is already in A, 
So there is no need to multiply it times any factor. Okay, so we solve for this. You go to the tables, find the factors, plug them in. And you would get minus 6,000 nine hundred and ninety two dollars and remember it's an annual worth relation so this is per year we have exactly the same units as part a we have dollars per year and this number right here is the one that we're going to be using for part C it says that we need to combine these two and that the annual variable cost it's going to be negative because it's a cost. So here we will have the annual worth of the automatic machine minus the variable cost of the automatic machine. Okay, so this is the header right here, but remember we're doing it for the automatic one only for now. Okay, so that means that it's going to be this one minus 6,992 minus the annual variable cost which is going to be 3x so we have our relation for the automatic feed machine now we need to, we need to do exactly the same thing but now for the manual So yes, we need to find the annual variable cost in dollars per year. Okay, so if we go here, we need these two, the labor and the output for the variable cost. So in this case, we have three workers at $12. This is in one hour. then in one hour they're going to output six tons and here we have cancelled out the hours but then we need our common parameter tons per year so we're going to have x tons over one year and now we can eliminate the tons so we are left with 3 times 12 times 1 times x divided by 6 times 1 so once we, we simplify this we will get 6x per year so we have the variable cause which is going to be 6x then part B we need the annual worth relation again if we go up it's going to be all of this the P converted to A in this case there's no salvage value we're going to have an N of 5 years and this is already in A so no factor will be needed so setting up the equation it's going to be minus 8,000 find a given P at 10% for 5 years no salvage so it's minus 1,500 and this is already in A this is going to give us a total of minus 3,610 and it's an annual is going to be per year. So this is the number that we need. Now for part C, we combine these two. So it's going to be the annual worth of manual minus, because it's a cost, even though you see it here as positive, the variable cost of the manual. So in this case, it's going to be minus 3,610 minus 
6x. Okay. So now we have our um, equations for the automatic and the manual one, okay, which is this one. Now the next step is to set the two relations equal and solve for the parameter value. So we'll be we will be solving for x. Okay, so the next step, step number three, will be set relations equal, meaning that the auto is going to equal the manual and solve for x. Okay. So we're going to use this one and this one right here or letter C for both of the alternatives. So we have minus 6,992 minus 3x equal to minus 3610 minus 6x. Okay. So you move the x's to one side and the numbers without x to the other side then you divide and your x should be equal to 1127 tons per year because remember that's that those were our units for x tons per year so this right here we can say it's our answer or in other words this would be our q b this is our break even point for these two alternatives the automatic and the manual one the break-even point would be 1,127 tons per year. Okay, but we're not done. So yes, we have a break-even point, but the question is not asking that. The question is asking, how many tons per year must be finished in order to justify the higher purchase cost of the auto feed machine? So in this case, the company really wants to purchase the auto feed machine okay so based on that break-even point they want to know when is it better to buy it the uh, to buy the auto one instead of the manual one okay so le let's take a look at the selection criteria for this okay so again we found the break-even point but this is a selection guideline if Q okay the Q that I'm asking for is less than the QBE, which is the X that you found, you're going to select the alternative with the larger variable cost. Okay, and you can see the comparison in the graph. Now, if the Q, or the, the quantity that I'm asking for, is greater than the break-even point, or the X that you just found, you're going to select the alternative that has the smaller variable cost. Okay, so let's see how this question relates. So we want to justify the automatic one. Based on the selection criteria, I'm just going to write it down here. If Q is less than QBE, in this case is the 1000 I'm going to put it here, 1,127 tons per year. Then you would purchase the manual because it's the larger variable cost. Okay, so notice that the manual has uh, a variable cost of 6x and the automatic one is 3x. Okay, so 6x would make will make the manual machine a larger variable cost. 
Now if the Q is greater than 1,127 tons per year, then the best purchase would be the automatic because it's the one with the smaller variable cost. In the question from this problem, they're asking us what do we need to have okay, in order to justify the automatic. So in this case, if we want to justify the automatic, then we must produce, I think that's the word that they use, or we must finish more than 1,127 tons per year. The question can be asked in a different way. So for example, they can tell you uh, for 1,000 units, which would be your best pick? So then you check here and 1,000 it's less, so you would say, oh, the manual would be best if you were to finish 1,000 uh, tons per year. But anything that's greater than 1,127 would be uh, justified uh, to purchase the automatic feed machine.